morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or the longevity products or formulations, ingredients, skin health issues, skin care products. I've been in the skincare business now for 35 years, and I know a heck of a lot about formulations and ingredients. 844 236 is your number. Likewise, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, and we do have lines open for you. Now's the time to call in, so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, or even better, if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're business-minded, and you want to start a business and enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, making your own hours, and making as much or as little money as you want without having to report to a boss or punch a time clock. You want to know about the longevity business for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a business and help spread the word about how important and powerful a good nutritional supplement program can be. This is especially relevant if you have benefited from the longevity products. If you have benefited from nutritional supplementation, don't keep it to yourself. You can spread the word and make money. At the same time, call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. 2470. They can give you more information. That's the Brightside Ben team. 866 735 2470. That's the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. You can also sign up right off the websites brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And then I also want to remind you to please check out my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com or Truth Retinol 5% Gel if you're dealing with acne blemishes or accelerated aging or you want to prevent aging from occurring. Retinol drives the production of collagen, hyaluronic acid, connective tissue in the skin. Make your own hyaluronic acid. Make your own collagen. Drive the production out of the cells that make these kinds of fibers and connective tissue by using retinol and vitamin C. Retinol and vitamin C together in our retinol 5% gel or just vitamin C in our Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Serum. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we are talking fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia, we've said, is mostly a female issue. Some 80 to 90% of fibromyalgia sufferers are women. And thus we come to the importance of estrogen, which is perhaps the most misunderstood chemical in the body. If you are dealing with a health challenge that involves estrogen, whether it's uh, breast cancer, reproductive cancers, endometriosis, fibrosis, heart disease, blood clots, autoimmune disease, or fibromyalgia, or if you're a male dealing with prostate issues, you want to focus on estrogen metabolism. You want to understand estrogen metabolism. You want to support estrogen metabolism. So this is especially important for women and for men, for that matter, who are predominantly estrogenic, estrogen dominance. 
if you're producing a lot of estrogen, and this is not just true for, but for women, it can also be true for men. If you're estrogen dominant, you really want to be focusing on how your body clears out estrogen as well as balancing out estrogen. And this is where we come into this whole topic of estrogen dominance, which is really, really important. I know in the skin world, estrogen dominance plays a huge role when it comes to skin health issues. Estrogen dominance can be compounded by this whole issue of xenoestrogens, fake estrogens, that is estrogens that are found in plastics, estrogens that are found in drugs, there's estrogen in the water supply. These xenoestrogens can compound estrogen dominance or they can just cause problems for anybody, really. You, have, you, can, you can recognize the, uh, estrogen dominance in yourself or in your family members or in your patients if you're a clinician by body, type, by body type or body shape and hair and also the skin. When you get really good, you're going to be able to recognize estrogen physiology and estrogen psychology pretty quickly. Estrogen psychology, there's an estrogen way of thinking or an estrogenic way of thinking. Estrogen is about mothering. It's about nurturing. It is first and foremost, the main role of estrogen is to make a baby. It's a baby-making hormone. Estrogen-dominant women will be curvy and buxom. Estrogen-dominant men will be rounder as well. They'll, have, they'll be more likely to have weight issues. Estrogen-dominant patients will have thicker skin, softer skin. They'll be less likely to wrinkle. Their skin will hide their age more effectively. And if you're less estrogenic, you're going to have thinning hair. You'll have uh, maybe darker hair types. Blonde hair is associated with estrogenicity. This is why young girls tend to be estrogen, tend to have blonde hair. And as they get older, and as the estrogen drops, the blonde hair tends to turn darker. Likewise, when women have a baby, after a woman delivers a baby, her hair tends to get darker. This is a sign that estrogen is dropping. Estrogen dominant women will, or and men for that matter, will be less type A personality, less athletically inclined. They'll be more likely to be epicurean, especially about food, which obviously has a nurturing quality. If you've been told that your estrogen is low, as in menopause or perimenopause, you may get put on something called HRT, hormone replacement therapy estrogen replacement therapy. Sometimes younger women who have skin problems will get put on estrogen replacement therapy. If, uh, young women who, or, or for that, well, mostly young women. Uh, if uh, young women are suffering from acne or oily skin, a lot of times dermatologists will put them on the birth control pill, estrogen pill. Likewise, if they have menstrual issues or endometriosis, in my opinion, being put on estrogen is a very dangerous practice. It's playing with fire. Remember, estrogen is a stress hormone. Estrogen is a fibrosis hormone. Estrogen is associated with all kinds of health problems. And to be put on an estrogen birth control pill or estrogen replacement therapy is just, it's really playing with fire. And all this makes sense when you understand the nature of estrogen as well as the importance of estrogen elimination and estrogen clearance. The list of side effects and toxicity associated with estrogen replacement or, or being medicated with estrogen as a treatment for your skin includes enlargement and tenderness of the breasts, fibrocystic breasts. And this is, uh, by the way, men can, can uh, suffer from a condition called gynecomastia, which is enlargement of the male breasts, swelling of the ankles and the legs, loss of appetite, weight changes, retention of water, nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, feelings of bloatedness, vaginal bleeding, spotting, fibroids, yeast infections, migraine headaches, mild dizziness, depression, decreased libido. These are all associated with excess estrogen. These are all the same kinds of issues that estrogen dominant women confront as a result, not of pharmaco pharmacological treatment, but of an abundance of estrogen. If you are going to use hormone replacement with estrogen, it is really a good idea that you focus on your digestive system because remember, bile and probiotics and the intestine are key players in the elimination of estrogen. And getting estrogen out of your body quickly is super, super important. And if you start taking estrogen as a drug, this is obviously going to overload, bombard the body with estrogen and overload the detox systems. If you're going to use estrogen, focus on the digestive system. It's so important. It's always important to focus on the digestive system, but especially if you're on estrogen replacement therapy. Use probiotics. Get on your nightly essence. 
Make sure you're supporting fat metabolism. Estrogen is a fat, and if you have any compromise in how your body processes fats, that can lead to not only an accumulation of estrogen, but remember, estrogen gets broken down into toxic metabolites, breakdown products. So that leads to an accumulation, that could lead to an accumulation of these toxic breakdown products as well. All right, we'll continue when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. This is Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. We've got search engines up at both websites and blog posts and news stories at, ben, at uh, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. You can also purchase Longevity products off the websites. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well or call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. also want to remind you to check out brightsidehealth.com. Uh, got a, a whole bunch of new products at brightsidehealth.com, including including a vegan protein powder. Also uh, got a hemp salve up there and also our CBD tincture made by Pure Hemp Botanicals. And then, of course, we have our all our enzyme products at brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com. Okay, so we're talking estrogen and fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is an estrogenic condition. Many health issues are estrogenic. Estrogenic issues, autoimmune diseases in particular, uh, are also estrogenic. Alzheimer's disease has an estrogenic component. Estrogen is a stress hormone. If you're taking estrogen as a, as a hormone replacement, you got to be really, really careful. Some folks do get benefits. I will say some folks get benefits, but the toxicity and the side effects associated with this stress hormone, and make no mistake about it, estrogen is a stress hormone. It is also a, uh, a, a fibro, a, a fiber-inducing hormone, a fibrosis hormone. All of the problems we've been talking about here on the bright side now for the last few months involve fibrosis. Estrogen is a fibrosis hormone. A lot of the problems associated, a lot of the toxicity and the side effects associated with estrogen involve its role as a stress hormone, involve its role as a fibro uh, fibrosis hormone. Fibroids are an estrogenic issue. Endometriosis is an estrogenic issue. If you're going to take estrogen, be careful. Make sure you're focusing on, on helping your body clear out the estrogen using bile salts, using your ultimate enzymes, using your probiotics, your nightly essence, making sure you're focusing on intestinal health, making sure you're focusing on how your body processes fats. Gallbladder disease increases when you use estrogen. Estrogens will increase the risk of cancer, endometrial cancer in postmenopausal women. Post, uh, uh, postmenopausal women who take estrogen are two to three times greater, uh, to have a two to three times greater chance of developing gallbladder disease as well as toxic blood, sludgy blood. Remember, all, dis all disease is cell disease, and all cell disease is preceded by toxic, sludgy blood, and estrogen increases the likelihood of toxic, sludgy blood. That's why you get blood clots. That's why one of the major side effects of estrogen replacement therapy is blood clots. Prolonged use of drug estrogen is associated with increased breast cancer, cervical cancer, vaginal cancer, kidney cancer, liver cancer. It increases your risk of uh, fibrocystic breast disease. Even if you're not on estrogen replacement therapy and you're only estrogen dominant, you're merely estrogen dominant, it's a good idea to focus on your digestive health and how your body eliminates estrogen. It's also a good idea to use progesterone. In pharmacy school, they tell us nobody should ever be on estrogen replacement therapy or estrogen birth control without being on progesterone as well. If you get the birth control pill, it's pretty much always going to be there, but it's not really real estrogen a real progesterone, there's fake progesterone, and fake progesterone is nasty stuff. If your doctor's giving you something called medroxyprogesterone, or if you're, on, uh, if you're on the birth control pill with norgesterol or some other kind of fake progesterone, be careful. Progesterone is non-toxic, but fake progesterone, pharmaceutical progesterone, is awfully toxic. Ask for real progesterone. If you're on the birth control pill or if you're on, uh, if you're on um, a, a hormone replacement therapy form of estrogen like Premarin, make sure you're balancing it out with real progesterone, not fake progesterone. Real progesterone is non-toxic. In fact, real progesterone can be helpful just as a calming hormone. 
And in my experience, many of the symptoms, menopausal symptoms in particular, that we try to address with estrogen, hot flashes, lack of sex drive, anxiety, mood issues, these are more effectively addressed with progesterone, and you don't have to worry about toxicity. And as it turns out, progesterone levels drop as women age pretty significantly, and estrogen is always being made. As long as you have body fat, you're making estrogen. Not true about progesterone. So a lot of times when we think we're dealing with estrogen, with, with uh, estrogen deficiencies, we're really dealing with progesterone deficiencies. And given progesterone's non-toxicity, it makes a lot of sense to try progesterone first before you go into toxic estrogen, toxic hormone replacement therapy. I get calls all the time, time and uh, letters all the time about hormone replacement therapy. Should I do hormone replacement therapy? Should I get on estrogen? I'm saying go with progesterone first, in my opinion, given its non-toxicity. And by the way, progesterone, is also an effective supplement for men. The problem with estrogen dominance or estrogen replacement therapy is if you are not clearing out estrogen, and especially if you're not clearing out these toxic metabolites of estrogen, you're more than likely going to be dealing with the dark side of estrogen, and that includes fibroids and fibrous, uh, uh, fibrocystic breasts, inflammation, cysts, insomnia, anxiety, infertility, obesity, increased risk of cancer, blood clots, etc. If you're estrogen dominant, as well as if you're on a uh, prescription estrogen. And also, if you are dealing with exposure to estrogenic chemicals, which are found in foods, dairy and beef, found in water, birth control pills. You know, every time you're on the birth, if you're on the birth control pill, every time you go to the bathroom, it goes in the water supply. Our water supply has drugs in it, not just estrogen drugs. There's, birth, uh, uh, there's uh, uh, antidepressants, Prozac in the water. Antihypertensives, chemotherapy, <clears throat> excuse me. And worst of all, in my opinion, as a guy who's been in the skincare business now for 35 years, is the cosmetic estrogens. Yes, you're rubbing, on estro you're rubbing estrogen on your skin if you're using a skincare product that has parabens in it and other preservatives. Fragrances are estrogenic. Sunscreens are estrogenic. This is one of the major reasons why I tell people to stay away or avoid sunscreens, despite what you hear from your dermatologist or your doctor. Sunscreens are nasty, nasty chemicals for many reasons, not the least of which is they're est they act like estrogens. If you have to use a sunscreen because you have no other options, you don't want to burn, you never want to burn. Burning is not a good thing, but if you have to use a sunscreen, get it off your skin as soon as you don't need it and stay away from products, especially eye creams, because the eye area is very thin skin and the estrogenic compounds go right into the, into the blood. Stay away from eye creams and other products that have estrogen, that have sunscreen in them, built in, whether you need them or whether you don't. That's one of the reasons I formulated the truth, so you wouldn't have to have exposure to parabens or other preservatives or fragrances which act estrogenic, act estrogenically. And focus on the gut, surprise, surprise. Remember, it's the dysbiosis, the messed up gut bacteria that start the whole ball rolling on toxic estrogens. And this makes perfect sense if you understand the triangle of disease. The gut, the digestive system is always the jumping off point to health or to the lack of it. Digestion, blood sugar, adrenal thyroid complex. And oh, by the way, hypothyroidism can be caused by estrogen dominance or excess amounts of estrogen. And this is why way more women suffer from hypothyroidism than men. Heart disease has, has an estrogenic component. This is the number one killer in America, heart disease. Cancer has an estrogenic component. It's the number two killer. Diabetes and autoimmune disease. Once again, there's a role for estrogen when it comes to these kinds of health challenges. All right, I don't mean to rip on estrogen. Obviously, it's an important hormone. Just got to make sure you're processing it correctly and not exposing yourself to too much of it. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're coming back with more good health information and your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Farm Spen. Tomorrow we will continue talking about fibromyalgia and estrogen and what you can do if you're dealing with estro estrogen dominance. There's some really cool supplements that you can take that help balance out estrogen. 
can help improve the clearance of estrogen. It's a, it's a question of balancing it out estrogen and also uh, improving the elimination of estrogen if you're dealing with estrogen dominance or you're dealing with estrogenic health issues, fibromyalgia or fibrocystic breasts. Anytime you hear the word fibrosis, you want to think about estro estrogen anytime you hear a fiber issue or a connective tissue issue for that matter. Estrogen is associated with inflammation of the connective tissue, excess amounts of est estrogen. We will continue talking about uh, estrogen and progesterone and vitamin A and vitamin E and some other strategies, DIM, I3C. These are all great ways to help balance out estrogen. We will continue talking about that tomorrow on the Bright Side. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. Hang on. If you're on hold, we'll get to you in just a moment. From the journal Nature Microbiology, Microbiomes, more influx in patients with inflammatory bowel disease. Patients with inflammatory bowel disease are more likely to see shifts in the makeup of the community of microbes in their gut than healthy people. This is so important. This is when I talk about the triangle of disease and the first point on the triangle of disease being the digestive system, what I really mean is the first point on the triangle of disease is the microbiome. The microbiome is the first place where the digestive system breaks down and it occurs way early. It occurs if you have a cesarean section, it occurs uh, if you're born cesarean section, it can occur even in the womb as you're being developed, as the fetus is being developed. And it certainly, it certainly can get thrown out of, uh, into chaos by the standard American diet, which begins way too early for most of us. If you're in your 50s and 60s or 40s or 50s and 60s, the chances are really, really good. The chances are way better than not that you're dealing with some kind of messed up microbiome. If you have inflammatory bowel disease, rest assured you've got a messed up microbiome. And it's just common sense. You don't need to read this article in Nature Microbiology to understand this, but it's just more scientific proof. From, uh, from the journal, doo -doo -doo, this is from Health Day, actually. Stress Buster, the same system that, act I love this, the same system that activates the stress response in your body also regulates breathing. But unlike most functions, which are hard or impossible to control, you can easily take control of your breathing. Have you heard this before? If you've been listening to The Bright Side for any more than one or two days, you know this is a fundamental concept when it comes to health on The Bright Side. When, it's part, when it comes to what I call the bright side philosophy. You can calm the body down quickly by breathing correctly. And because most of the diseases that we suffer from, most of the chronic degenerative diseases that we suffer from have an element of a jacked up stress system, learning to calm the body down by breathing is so important. According to this article, there are four breathing exercises that you can learn to do in just minutes. Number one, abdominal breathing. Put your hand over your belly. When you breathe air in right down to your belly, you're going to notice that your hand rises as you're, as you're breathing. Put your hand on your belly. You want to feel your hand go up if you're breathing correctly. That's called abdominal breathing. Number two, breathing to a certain count. Breathe into a count of three or four or five. Hold it and then breathe out slightly. Now, personally, I believe, this is according to, these guys say to do, uh, breathe, uh, hold your breath. I don't believe in holding your breath. I like circular breathing. That's where you breathe in and then you breathe out. And you always want to breathe a little bit extra out than you do in. The relaxation response is activated on the exhale. The inhale is actually activates the stress response. Oxygen is a stressful element. So the body activates its stress response. I don't want to say stress response. It's energizing response. If you're driving or if you're uh, feeling tired when you're driving, you know how when you're driving late at night or if you're on the third shift and you're coming home and you feel like nodding out when you're driving, then you want to focus on the inhalation. You get energized by the inhalation. If you put more, uh, if, you're, if, if you spend more time on the inhalation than the exhalation, you'll get energized. If you spend more time on the exhalation than the inhalation, you'll get relaxed. There's something called the breath of fire, where you really do a lot of inhalation and shallow exhalation. That really energizes you. Go like this, <laughs> really fast. Deep on the inhalation and then just quickly on the exhalation. Three-part breathing. Start by breathing deeply and then expelling all the air out of your lungs. And then with the next breath, imagine filling up the lower portion of your lungs with air first. I say go all the way down to your legs or your feet. 
and then finish up by filling the very top of your lungs with air. That's called three-part breathing. When done correctly, it's almost like a massage of your upper back and shoulders. Start by breathing in deeply, then expelling all of the air out of your lungs. Then with the next breath, imagine filling up the lower portions of your lungs first, then the chest, and then filling the very top of your lungs with air. That's called three-part breathing. And then ocean breathing. Close off the back of your throat as if you were breathing in through a straw, like that. If, you can, if that makes sense to you. Close off the back of your throat as if you're breathing in through a straw, and you'll hear a very slight hiss, hissing sound, like that. As you breathe in and breathe out, this exercise should be done with your mouth closed, inhaling and exhaling through your nose. That's called ocean breathing because of the sound that it makes as you're breathing in. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Mary in Missouri. Missouri Mary, welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, I have been diagnosed with SIBO, and I don't want to take the Lipamax and all the... Hey, Mary, Mary, before. hang on. Sweetheart, hang on. you got a terrible, terrible connection there, and I don't know if it's... Is this better? Oh, yeah, much better. better. Much better, much better. I've been diagnosed with SIBO, and I don't want to take rifamaxin and all the drugs for it. I'd like to heal myself naturally. I have to say, since I've been on kefir, plain kefir, for six weeks, my stomach cramping has gone away. <laughs> Little How do you like that? Of food, uh -huh, food, particles of food in my stool have disappeared, but the acid is still there. Right. I have a concurrent fructose intolerance with my SIBO. How would you heal me? Then? Nah. <laughs> I'm not going to heal you. God's going to heal you. You're going to right. heal you. The body's okay. going to heal you. I'm just going to tell you what to do. So here, here's, I'm going to give you some ideas. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Okay. I'm going to give you some ideas. Did you say rifampin? Is that what they want to give you? Uh, rifamaxin, it's a, uh, I don't know what the real name of it is, but. I don't know what uh, the real name of rifamaxin is, but it sounds like an antibiotic to me. Rifamaxin, uh, is that correct? It, I do know that online says. It's an antibiotic, it yeah. It's yeah. an antibiotic. It's okay. uh, only a boneheaded doctor would give yeah. somebody an antibiotic when they have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Because yeah. what's going to happen is, is you're going to kill everything. You're not just going to yeah. kill the bad bacteria. You're going to kill the good bacteria. This is the right. dumbest thing. Just the stupidest yeah. idea to give somebody an antibiotic when they're dealing with dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria. Yeah. Can you see how yeah. dumb it is? Yeah. You should tell your doctor, that's dumb, doctor. If I already have dysbiosis and a messed up, my gut bacteria messed up, you're going to now give me an antibiotic? How? Uh, the idiocy. Absolute yeah. lunacy. So you're, but you're on the right kefir. track with the kefir, but you're not missing a key point if you're still dealing with heartburn, and that is the elimination diet. That is eliminating okay. problem foods. You're going to notice that your problems are worse when you eat certain foods. Stay on the okay. kefir. Okay, stay on the kefir. I would be adding sauerkraut. I like fermented vegetables better than fermented dairy because you okay. still can have a problem if you have a dairy issue, although the bacteria right. are helpful. But fermented veggies provide you with fiber, and if you're doing fermented cabbage, cabbage also has its own wonderful soothing and healing qualities for the digestive tract. And then also you get nitrates and nitrites in the veggies, which can also help, uh, help, uh, help you improve uh, uh, the bacterial population or improve dysbiosis. Hang on, Mary. Well, I'm going to fi sure. finish sure. up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Got lines open, 844-236-6010. Talking to Mary in Missouri. SIBO, you there? SIBO, uh, Missouri Mary, you there, ma'am? Yeah. Hi, Mary. Yes. Uh, yeah, they're going to put me in a procedure, uh, Ben, and they want to give me a four-hour IV antibiotic. Mary, fix your phone, sweetheart. Fix your phone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're going to give me a procedure next week, and they want to hook me up to a four-hour uh, IV antibiotic, and I really don't don't want it. But Why are you going to a doctor? And what would you do? I would f work on my food. Stop eating for two or three days. You're, you're going to feel better right away. That's first of okay. all. Stop okay. eating for two or three days. Uh, get if you if you can't fast. I like. I think a fast is awesome. And by the way, intermittent fasting, you guys, you don't have to be sick to. 
benefit from fasting periodically. It's an amazing, amazing longevity tool and just health tool. But if you're dealing with SIBO, absolutely you want to fast for a couple of days. If you can't fast, do a Swero V cleanse. I know I talked about this yesterday probably. I talked about it a lot. You get a half a bottle of Swero. You do a half a bottle of Swero V, S-U-E-R-O, V-I-E. You get it off uh, from brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Do half a bottle every hour. You should have some anyway, Mary. You should be doing it anyway. It's a great way okay. to get some good bacteria in your gut. Before I went to break, okay. we talked about cabbage, fermented cabbage, sauerkraut. Yeah. Yes. Cabbage contains something called vitamin U, which is a compound. Nobody really knows what it is, but it's a compound that helps soothe the gut. Cabbage soup can be helpful, but I like fermented cabbage because you get the bacteria, you also get fiber, and you also get the nitrates and nitrites. In fact, any fermented vegetable will get you fiber and the nitrates and nitrites. That's why I prefer f fermented vegetables over yogurt and kefir. Well, what about the vinegar in them? Doesn't that count? Uh, I think on fructose intolerance, I'm not supposed to. I'm not vinegar. a believe. I don't. I don't buy into that. Uh, vinegar is amazing for okay. the digestive system for helping okay. support stomach acid. If you have a problem with vinegar, use betaine, B-E-T-A-I-N-E. -E. You'll get that okay. in the, uh, in the uh, uh, ultimate enzymes from longevity. If you okay. use the ultimate, nightly I'm, the ultimate nightly essence, you'll get, in addition to bacteria, you'll also get, ba uh, you'll also get uh, enzymes. So okay. between enzymes, good bacteria, fermented foods, fasting, you're going to go a long way towards improving SIBO without a doctor. But you also want to make sure that you're eliminating problem foods. You probably yeah. haven't eliminated foods, and that's why you're dealing with the heartburn and yet don't have complete relief. You're not okay. going to know what the problem foods are unless you write everything down in a book. You do, that's called okay. the elimination diet and a food diary. If you've listened to this program, you know I talk about it almost every day. So you eat okay. one type of food, you see how you respond, and then if it's, you have a problem, you eliminate that food. You'll find okay. that gluten is usually involved, or some, uh, well, gluten will say, grains can be involved, cereals and breads can be involved, also, uh, also uh, dairy is sometimes a problem for people, and then also eggs and legumes and nuts are a problem. In fact, those are the big, the major, uh, major food allergens or food toxins. Gluten and grains, I say gluten and grains because sometimes there's other things in grains and if you go gluten free you still may run into a problem. So gluten and grains, uh, and, and that's not just barley, rye, oat, and wheat. It could be any kind of grain. It could be quinoa you might be having a problem with. Oh. So just any of them. You just got to be, uh, you got to uh, take notes and you got to be a scientist and you got to accumulate the data that's personal to you. Not, don't okay. go by a list of good foods or bad foods. Those okay. are just rules of thumb. You're different. You know, every, hum every human being is unique, so you got to go by what's a problem for you. All right, so the elimination diet and then also uh, uh, a food diary and then using supplements, probiotics, digestive enzymes, lecithin granules can be helpful in addition to apple cider vinegar, something called hyaluronic acid. I'm sure you've heard of that. I'm yeah. on it. I started uh, it. Good, good deal. Also, uh, anything that's got a muc mucousy uh, kind of slimy quality like the Fucoid Z or algae or mushrooms all have a coating and soothing effect on the digestive tract. And then I would be, be using glutamine powder. Go get uh, some glutamine powder. Don't buy the capsules. The capsules are just, they're overpriced. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you get, it's a way better value if you get a pound jar, or half a pound jar of glutamine powder and just do a half a teaspoonful to a teaspoonful every day, stir it in water. Glutamine is also great for folks who are dealing with sugar cravings. Glutamine powder can help kill your sugar cravings. So uh, glutamine powder is also very soothing. It actually acts as fuel for the cells of the intestine. So it's very important for anybody dealing with any kind of intestinal, in addition to dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria for folks dealing with ulcerative colitis or irritable bowel syndrome also benefit from glutamine powder. All right, does that make sense? And last Great. but not least, let me, let me yeah. just say one last thing. Uh, okay. If you're going to be on an antibiotic, make sure you're doing your probiotic a few hours after you do your antibiotic because the antibiotic will kill the probiotic and also use fiber, grind up flaxseed fiber every day and that will help eliminate the antibiotic and also bentonite clay, uh, half a teaspoonful of bentonite clay in water will help suck up that extra toxin and pull it out of your system. And I think I said bile salts, extra bile salts. If I didn't, you might want to take some extra bile salts, B-I-L-E, bile salts. Oh, ton of information okay. there for you, sweetheart. And there's yeah, also, I didn't even tell you about regular supplements that you might want to take, although I, I should mention one more. Zinc, 50 milligrams a day, very important for helping the body make hydrochloric acid. Uh, and oh. and many, many folks dealing with SIBO are dealing with uh, hydrochloric acid problems. And stay away from dried fruit. 
that's a real, that's a, that messes up uh, the gut. And, and for folks dealing with SIBO, that can be a real problem. Dried apricots and, and uh, any kind of dried fruit, dried bananas, et cetera. All right, I got to move, I Mary. Notes. I wrote it down. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bless you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bless you as well. Have a beautiful day. All right, let's move on to Tony in Texas. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, Tony. Hi, Ben. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, I, wanted to sh- I wanted to start with a quick testimonial. You spoke to my father about two years ago. Um, he was diagnosed with CLL and uh, was in really poor shape. Uh, anyways. Uh, Chronic lymphocytic on. leukemia you're talking about? CLL? Yes, yes yeah. sir. Yes. Okay. Um, and anyways, just uh, he was falling apart, and that was that was uh, um, your you know diagnosis. Uh, but uh, we got. Did I say that? Died. Did I say he's yeah, falling apart? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because there was a whole list of of symptoms and issues, and and um, you know the the doctors were treat, treating the symptoms, and I think that everything they did made matters worse. Anyways, he got on a diet. A few weeks later, he was he was doing. Um, the tangy tangerine um, a few weeks later feeling better good enough that um, he uh, he started golfing again which was huge, nice. huge oh that's awesome awesome and how's he doing now? anyways well unfortunately he's no longer with us the oh, okay. uh, the doc the doctors got the got the better of him convinced oh. him um, that he didn't need to worry about his diet that oh you God. know uh, uh, that uh, uh, the supplements were interfering with the, oh the my gosh oh, and yeah. everything and uh, um, oh. things things uh, reverted got worse and uh, he passed away with the I'm sorry so. Tony I'm sorry but he, but he was better when he did when he got on the program he was better and then they put him on the he drugs was tremendously oh, better and and I don't know I don't know why he chose not to stick with it, but, you know, kind of of that generation. He was yeah, in his early 80s, yeah, you know, yeah. that generation where the, the doctors, scared you know, the, the doctors could do no wrong, and he oh. needed to follow what they had to say. Anyways, All right. I, 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 mench- I, I appreciate you, you know, letting me give you kudos, but also mentioning, you know, that rest of the story, because I'm dealing with something similar with my mom. What's um, she got? So well, let me just tell you real quick. She's 75. Um, she uh, was a nurse for over 30 years in the neonatal intensive care unit, um, and very strong opinions of doctors, and they're not positive. <laughs> right. Having said that, now that she's dealing with her own uh, her own issues, um, same as my father, the doctors could do no wrong, and she blindly accepts everything that they tell her. So. It, that's kind of what what we're dealing with here. What's her um, health issue? What does she so, have? So so um, AFib. Uh, uh-huh. She had she had a heart attack a couple weeks ago. Uh, drinker and a smoker. Um, oh my! And, still uh, still a drinker and smoker? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the doctor told her that she could she should cut back her wine to just one or two glasses a day, and and of course he told her to stop smoking. But you know that's. The easier said than done for her, um, um, but but anyways, they uh, they try tre- they try treating it with uh, with uh, medication. Where they gave her blood thinners. Well, she's on blood thinners, but she's on other stuff too to try to reset her. her Tony, I'm a, I'm going to run out of time here, but I only have about a minute. But this is a very important a very important subject. If you could call back, I'd love to I'd love to address this further. In the meantime, have her call if she wants to. Call the body down, number one, get her on coenzyme Q10, get her on vitamin C, high doses of vitamin C. If she can do the Beyond Tang Tangerine, that would be great. Uh, and then also the B complex, super duper important. Ask the doctor to give her a B12 shot. There's so many, so many things she could do. You know, she, she's drinking and smoking. You know, the drinking isn't as bad as the smoking, believe it or not. All uh, right, right. You know, there's just so many things you could do. AFib is not a reason to be medicated as serious as it is. Tony, I'm out of time, brother. I, I, Thank thanks you for the much, kind man. words. I appreciate it. If you could call back, I'd love to address your uh, your issue on the air. Otherwise, send me an email, ben at KS.